Video game adaptations of existing properties usually suck. While there is the occasional hit, most of these games are simple cash grabs that are designed to sell based off name recognition alone. Recently, however, the volume of these types of games does seem to have diminished, most likely due to the prevalence of the internet and review aggregation sites. Timmy is no longer wandering a GameStop and impulse buying a game he's never heard of just because it's based on My Little Pony. He's deep in the basement reading all 5,000 publication and user reviews on it, or watching review videos like mine. Back in 2014, South Park was able to buck its trend of bad tie-in games with The Stick of Truth, an RPG game that saw you exploring all of South Park with the whole gang from the show. Now, almost harder than making a good tie-in game is making a good sequel to a good tie-in game. But that is what the Fractured Butt Hole aimed to do in 2017. Instead of playing fantasy, the kids have moved on and are now playing superheroes. And there's a new battle system to boot. So is this game able to recapture the magic of the Stick of Truth? Or did the developers deviate too significantly, resulting in a return to the trash can of tie-in games? Let's discuss. Alright guys, before we get into the review, I just want to remind you to please like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you enjoy the content, if you enjoy the reviews, and you want to see them continue, please support the channel with a like or a subscribe. It really does help. It really does mean a lot. The game picks up right where Stick of Truth leaves off. The kids are all playing fantasy. However, something horrible is brewing in South Park, and it's up to the coon and friends to solve it. In traditional South Park fashion, the kids are doing something benign, in this case looking for a lost cat because they need the reward money to fund their superhero film franchise, yet find themselves involved in a sinister plot to infuse drugs with cat's waste in order to drive the citizens of South Park insane. Much like an episode of the show, things get absolutely crazy while the kids are still focused on the one thing that they set out to accomplish. Now, I've never actively been one to watch or keep up with the show, though I always enjoy it if I catch a random episode on Comedy Central or wherever. I do have to say, the ability of the writers to satire and comment unflinchingly on all topics, peoples, and religions is something I've always respected, and none of that is lost in this game. If you're a fan of the show, you'll enjoy this game strictly from a story and presentation perspective. There's a ton of callbacks to previous episodes. I streamed this game while I was playing it, and I had a really big South Park fan watching my stream constantly letting me know of all the, the callbacks and shoutouts and, and little things that I was missing as someone who has not really seen the show a lot. Though the main narrative is a little weak, especially towards the later sections of the game, it really does start to lose focus. Now, if you're not a fan of South Park's style and humor, the game will most likely come off as juvenile, inappropriate, and offensive. I mean, you play a character with a magical ass that can affect reality with his farts, where the game's difficulty increases with the darkness of your character's skin tone, and you're assaulted by rednecks regardless of your chosen gender or sexual orientation. I'm pretty sure if a non-South Park fan plays this game, they're gonna have a bad time. Overall, I give the story a three and a half out of five. The game's battle system changed a bit since The Stick of Truth. A simple turn-based tactical combat system is used. Battle areas are fairly small, and each character has four skills to choose between when acting that affect certain areas in a character's vicinity. There's a wide array of party members that you can use, as well as a number of classes that you can select for your own character. As the game progresses, you're able to equip multiple classes at once, allowing you to pick and choose the skills you want freely from each. The system works well enough 
Though the fights did feel like they took much longer than they needed to, driving me to avoid combat when possible. There's also a few combat-heavy sections of the game, usually big story beats, the end of chapters, where you have to do a lot of combat pretty much non-stop, and those can feel real tedious. Now, outside of combat, you're free to explore South Park, where you can find a number of collectibles and secrets. Over the course of the game, you'll unlock exploratory abilities, allowing your character to use his magical ass to reach previously blocked areas. Another fun ass-related side activity finds you pooping in every toilet that you can find, with a full-on minigame attached. It's actually all pretty enjoyable, though South Park itself is relatively small, and unfortunately once you explore a building once, there's no reason to go back. This means that towards the second half of the game, this open world really becomes more of a much longer path between objective A and B. Because of this lack of things to do in the later parts of the game, as well as the tedious feeling to some of the fights, I've got to give the gameplay a 3.5 out of 5. Graphically, this game nails the South Park look and feel. Although they're limited to the cardboard cutout look of the show, many of the various characters that you encounter are well detailed, there's also a wide range of costumes available to your character, and you can customize every piece of your outfit, leading to some, let's say, unique combinations. Now, if you don't find the visuals of the show appealing, then I don't see how this game's going to change your mind, since it is so faithful. Similarly, most of the sounds are right out of the show as well. Usually when you enter a building or a business, you hear a song from the show. A lot of the vocal works, a lot of callbacks from the show as well. That said, the game does also have some more standard music for battles and the overworld, which does fit the theme of the game, but doesn't really stand out in my memory. This is a hard one to rate because while, like I said, the game does look nice and some of the characters do have good details, it's still hard to argue against the fact that South Park itself does not look that great. It's not supposed to look great. It's supposed to look like what it is. Little cardboard figures cut out and stop motioned. It's, it's hard to give this a genuine rating on the graphics. I landed right in the middle with a 3 out of 5. Overall, The Fractured But Whole is a solid RPG wrapped in a wonderful South Park skin. I think without the South Park name, this is a pretty average game and my score reflects that. However, as your love for the show increases, I think so too will your rating for the game. There is a lot to find in there for fans of the show. Not being a fan of the show, I still enjoyed my time with the game. I still enjoyed playing through it. But the story does get a little too long in the end. It, it overstayed its welcome. The game took me just over 20 hours to play through, and I do feel like it could have been a few hours shorter. By the end, it did feel like a bit of a slog. Now, if you actively despise the show or find the type of humor unfunny or even offensive, then you're gonna hate this game. Do not play this game. If you can stand the style of the show, if you like the style of the show, even if you're not a diehard fan like me, I do think you will enjoy your time with the game. The game underneath it is solid enough. The story and the comedy and the humor is good enough even without getting the references to appreciate it. So overall I have to give The Fractured Butthole a three and a half out of five with the asterisk that if you're a fan of the show, I could see this going all the way up to a four and a half out of five because of the love and care put into it uh, with the little Easter eggs from the show and things like that. So don't take this rating if you are a big fan of South Park as a reason not to play. The whole product, however, is to me less than the Stick of Truth was. I, I think I liked Stick of Truth a little more. That doesn't mean I think this game was necessarily bad, just less good than the first one. For a value, I would say grab it on sale. This game is old enough at this point. There's no reason to be spending full price on this game. It goes on sale pretty regularly for under $10. I would probably pay 
at most 20 and not feel like I got terribly gypped, not knowing how often it goes on sale. If, just wait for a sale. This game goes on sale really regularly, and it's worth picking up when you do. So what do you think about this game? Is it better than the Stick of Truth? What's your favorite South Park call-out in the game? Hit the comments, let me know. Do you like these videos? If you do, I would encourage you to please hit the like button. Please subscribe to the channel. It, it really helps so much. Share the videos with people, friends, family, loved ones, hated ones if you don't like it. And I'll see you guys with the next video.